Hey, what's up everyone? Happy Friday. It's a lovely day here in the Bay Area. Let me know where you're from. Where are you watching from? Let me know how it is out there. Today we have a very special guest, Steve Toth. This is the second time around. I had him about two years ago. And so much has changed since then. A lot of great things happening on his end. I see Steve in the back. Hey Steve, can you hear me okay? Oh wait, I can't hear, oh let me turn on your audio. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Love it. Oh man, look at all those guitars in the background. Love it. Hey, what's up everyone? Today we'll be talking about some SEO employee to SEO entrepreneur. All kinds of great things. Some great, some top notes from the SEO notebook. Don't forget to visit today's sponsor, hrefcom slash awt. We got about eight more minutes to go. Steve just joined us in the back room. Looking awesome. Love it. All right, guys. I might be back in a sec, Dre. I'll be right back. Sounds good. Don't be shy, guys. Let me know where you're from. Say hi in the live chat. We got a very special treat at the very end. So stay to the very end with Steve Todd. If you want to get a HRF's swag bag, swag box, if you've been following me on Twitter, just put I Love SEO in the live chat and shoot me an email. And I'll get a box out to you as soon as possible. Oh yeah, Carol, I love SEO. Be sure to email me. (laughs) Today we'll be talking about how Steve went from SEO employee to SEO entrepreneur, building the SEO notebook and G score. Don't forget to visit today's sponsor, hrefs.com slash awt. Be sure to stay till the very end, the very, very, very end, for a great musical performance. (laughs) All right, guys, we've got about six more minutes to go. Don't go that far, man. Don't go that far. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you were the very first one to perform live, and I can't wait to have you back on. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I I practiced for all of about two minutes earlier. Love it. <laughs> Alright guys, don't be shy. Say hi in the live chat. Let me know where you're from. But I love SEO if you want a free swag box from hrefs.com. Let's see who's in the live chat now. We see Ernesto. Hi, what's up, Dre and Steve from Florida? What's up, Ernesto? Kobe. Hi, Steve and Dre. I love SEO. Fletcher. What's up, my man? Happy Friday. Luther. Hi, Stephen Dre. What's up? <laughs> Hannah, welcome back. All right, guys. Today we'll be talking about some top notes from the SEO notebook, the mastermind mansion, what goes on over there, and how an SEO employee went to an SEO entrepreneur. And that's Steve Taw, today's special guest. Don't forget to today. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Don't forget to visit today's sponsor, hrefs.com. If you want a free gift swag box from hrefs.com, just put I love SEO in the live chat and shoot me an email at dre at seo.video.
did you move office steve is that like a that's a new like yeah yeah it's a new uh new space so new space. got uh my free reign of all my guitar collections i only had two in the background last time now i have five <laughs> <laughs> i love it i mean have you always had them or you just actually collect them yeah no no I've, I've always had them um these these two uh this one and this one are new like uh -huh. from this year uh, but the other ones are older nice how's it going with you good good I, I mean i just moved myself you know during this during the past two years we've you know the past i've got a new place <laughs> so i'm filming out i try to keep the the, the background is kind of the same so people can't really tell <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah For, there we go mine, mine's uh, drenched in personality <laughs> love it we got True Nixon. Greetings, Dre and Steve. Today's show gonna be fire. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Is, is your like a? Do you consult from? Do you have your own office, or do you actually consult from your, your own space at at home, or? Right here. This is where I'll, I consult from. Oh, there you go. Yeah. This is my space. Love it. All right, guys, today we'll, t we'll be talking to Steve Toth, the founder of SEOnotebook.com. We'll be talking about how he went from SEO employee to SEO entrepreneur and how uh, also about the top notes on SEOnotebook.com. So be sure to stay till the very end. We got a very special guest, a special presentation from Steve. So be sure to watch till the very end. We got about two more minutes to go. I'm going to go ahead and start getting things ready here. So don't be shy, you guys. I see a bunch of you out there in the live chat. Say hi and where you're from. <clears throat> Steve, I can't wait to compare this episode to our last episode. So much has changed. <laughs> like, even like yeah. You were like my top, uh, my first top 10 guest, one of my first 10 guests, yeah. All right, guys. I'm just letting my client know that um, I might be a little bit late for a meeting that's scheduled right after this. Okay. We have Dave Galingas from PA. All right, guys. Go ahead and put your shouts out in the live chat. I'm going to start getting things ready here. I got about less than one minute to go. Today's topic, so we'll talk about some popular SEO notes from the SEOnotebook.com. We'll be talking about the Mastermind Mansion, whatever that's about. Pretty interesting. I wonder how you get into that. And how an SEO employee to became an SEO entrepreneur. Steve Todd. Don't forget to visit today's sponsor, hrefcom slash AWT. Wanna see you be an SEO expert Paul Andre Devera Steady dropping knowledge Over 15 years in the game So he knows all about it Master the art of SEO You will be amazed Time to get your brand off page To on page Dropping knowledge Legendary for sure Whether you're just getting started A self-employed entrepreneur Yeah, let's go Subscribe to the SEO video show Hey, hey, hey Welcome to another episode of the SEO video show Where SEO is alive and fun My name is Paul Andre Devera A.K.A. Dre And I keep here at SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest. And my special guest today is the founder of SEOnotebook.com, Steve Toth. Before we get started, let's say what's up to everyone in chat. I see Dave, Truy, Carol, Kobe, Ernesto, Fletcher, Lothar, Hannah, Marcus. What's up, everyone? Be sure to say hi. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Now let's get on with the show. This is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Ah! 
What kind of fruit do SEOs like best? Low hanging. <laughs>was busy updating and refreshing its content on the Google Search Central. Spam policies for Google Web with Search replaces the Quality Query Guidelines section of the Webmaster Guidelines. It has they rewritten to cover more relevant examples and use more pra- uh, precise language. Notable updates include link spam, malware and malicious behaviors, hack content, thin affiliate pages, misleading functionality, copyright removal requests, and online harassment removals and scam and fraud. All right. Our first video today is from Nathan Gotch. He shares two link acquisition opportunities that we should try. Let's check it out. Any local campaign, the easiest low-hanging fruits you can get is just look for sponsors, okay? So what I'll do is I'll search sponsor St. Louis or sponsors Brentwood, uh, donation opportunity St. Louis, like anything like that that's relevant. Then we just start to dig through and find which pages are actually linking out to their sponsors or partners, okay? And this one in this case is. So what I would do is I just reach out like, hey, how much uh, is it to become a sponsor on this this page? Simple as that, not, not anything complicated. They'll tell you how much it is. If it makes sense, do it. Uh, and this is this is one way to build that geo-targeted relevance. Yes, it's not gonna be the the most hyper-relevant opportunity because it's not relevant on the topic level, but we're trying to build local relevance here. Really, really targeted local relevance. And then once you've tapped all those out, then usually what we'll do is we'll go right into just guest posting uh, or even maybe niche edits as well. But what we'll do here is then I'll just search eyelash plus write for us. So I wanna look for the most relevant opportunities first, like really relevant to their core competency. So if we look at this, you know, become a writer for Divine Lashes. This is hyper relevant to what they do. So we can certainly go here and try to submit some content here to get some links. Something similar to the sponsorship ideas, offering scholarships at local schools is the next way to get a powerful .edu backlink. Okay, Clint Butler was um, on, on Becoming Dangerous with SEO with Schema, was on Niche Site Builders this past week. Let's check it out. Schema.org, that entire project was designed in order to um, categorize the web, place it into things. So the, okay. what you're doing with advanced schema and just at a minimum, let's say about dimensions, you're saying my page is about plumbing. My page is about plum, um, it mentions Alfreda, let's say I'm working in Alfreda, Georgia. It mentions Georgia and it mentions companies and contractors. So now my page is about plumbing and it mentions these cities. And before Googlebot has ever read my content, I've already tied it in with okay. entities. Yep. Uh, okay. and, and the same would go with the local business schema. Uh, you put that on your page and you build it out nice and you tie it directly to your map you're going to see rankings boost in, in both organic and the map because you've tied those together and you said, hey, Googlebot, this is what this page is about and this is who it's associated with. So both those algorithms uh, will reward you from that, for that. The same with organization. You're worried about branding. Um, that'll tie that in too and, and keep those um, so you can actually start taking over your brand and become your own entity. And then people will associate your entity with a keyword and then they'll have to start mentioning your entity. You know what I mean? So yeah. all that stuff all compounds uh, and it makes it, it will do it eventually without schema, but schema makes the whole process a whole lot faster. Be sure to check out the full video to learn more about how Clint uses schema. All right. Boost your SEO game with profitable PPC campaigns with Joel Bondarowski on Duda. Let's check this one out. That it could do for you is it could help improve your organic results. If you do SEO, you know that like you have a page title and a description. One thing that helps you get ranked better organically is having your organic results CTR high, be higher. So a lot of times what I see, you know, SEOs do is they'll kind of make an assumption on what the best page title and page description should be for their, um, you know, for the pages they're optimizing for. And that assumption is just, you know, it could be right, it could be wrong, you don't know. But with PPC, you could actually experiment with different headlines and different descriptions in a different format. It's in a PPC ad, it's not an organic search result, right? But that can translate over. So over here, for example, I have two PPC ads, and you can see that the two of them are performing very differently from CTR. 
right? So if I was to optimize for the same keywords that are in this ad group, I could take, I could, I could learn from the titles and descriptions I'm using from the first ad and use that for, uh, you know, my, you know, page title and description. So that way my organic result will have a better click through rate, which then in turn will help my organic rank. I love having synergy between uh, PPC and SEO. It's something that I've been using throughout my whole career as a corporate SEO. All right, so what's the purpose of keyword research? Lee Witcher answers on SEO Fight Club this week. Let's check it out. So I look at it, there's three questions when I'm doing keyword research that I like to look at. First one, is the keyword worth pursuing? Because if it's not worth pursuing, you know, why bother it? Why try to, you know, go and rank for it and everything else? So you want to see, is it is it valuable enough to be worth my time and effort? Second thing I like to look at is how much work will it take to rank it? You know, uh, obviously something like uh, cotton candy colored socks with non-slip bottoms is a whole lot easier to rank for than mesothelioma lawsuit. Um, you know, one's more lucrative than the other as well. So you're looking at a trade-off there. And when you're looking at the page that you're building, which keywords should be included on my page? So he goes on to share the value of keywords with the CPC multiplied by the search volume. So be sure to check the full video out. Uh, this brings me to my favorite part of the show. Be sure to ask questions and I will address them in the order that they are received. But before we introduce our guests, here's a word from our sponsor. Are you sick of your competitors outranking you in the search results? Your solution is Ahrefs Webmaster Tools, and it's free 99. This isn't one of your 14-day free trial offers. Instead, it's a super powerful tool that'll do a full website audit for you and keep working for you for free. It'll scan your site and prioritize precisely what you need to fix and improve for your search results. Visit hrefs.com webmaster-tools for this free tool. Find the link below and by checking our sponsors, you support this show. Now let's introduce our guest. Steve is the former SEO strategy lead at FreshBooks and in 2020, he left the company and took on as a month's client. He currently runs SEO that ranks a boutique consulting firm focused on growth stage companies in search of scalable channels. Current clients include international SaaS and e-commerce brands. He's a product advisor for Keyword.com. His work has been discussed in USA Today, Business.com, Search Engine Land, Search Engine Retable, and more. Please welcome the founder of SEO Notebook with 14,000 plus subscribers, Steve Todd. Steve, my man, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Dre. I'm really excited to be here. Love it, love it. Everyone, give him a round of applause. <laughs> All right. If you haven't known, this is the second time Steve has been on, and I haven't interviewed him for two years. So a lot has happened for the past years. But before I get started, this is the first question I ask all my SEO professionals that come on board. Steve, in one minute or less, how does Steve get ranking on page one of Google? I uh, make sure that I'm co covering the topic comprehensively. I'm not just trying to rank one page. I'm trying to rank, uh, I am ranking one page ultimately, but I'm trying to um, teach Google that I am an authority on that topic. And uh, basically, yeah, trying to have that topical coverage buzzword, uh, topical authority. Um, I think that's still the name of the game and um, I wouldn't try to rank without it. Love it, first knowledge bomb today. Okay, let's rewind this real quick. Steve, take us way back, way, way back. When you, how'd you first get into SEO? Uh, well, I was uh, I got a job at a web development company, and I was put in charge of the blog. And um, you know, they pretty much gave me free reign in terms of what to do. And this was back in 2010, so it was pretty much as easy as uh, seven percent keyword density. But mm -hmm. um, I managed to find a couple of keywords that actually generated business for the company, and um, it just really opened my eyes into the world of SEO. And then um, about a year later um, uh, into that gig, I got a job at an internet marketing company mm -hmm. and uh, 
got even further immersed in SEO, sitting beside some really knowledgeable SEO managers early on in my career, uh, enabled me to ask every question that I had to a person who was standing, you know, sitting right uh, beside me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, since 2010, I pretty much had the bug. 2010. Okay. So what, what part of SEO made you so interested in it? I think just actually seeing my content in the SERP, um, that was a huge thrill. Um, you know, back in the day, it was pretty much as easy as, um, yeah, like I said, 7% keyword density, you get indexed and you're there. Um, nowadays, uh, you know, depending on the type of site you're working on, it can take much longer uh, to hit page one. But back then, um, it was a lot easier and there was also less competition. There was way less content on the web. So um, you were able to basically, you know, find something that people were searching for and um, that you didn't have, you know, 50 other articles writing about it. You might only have, you know, a handful. So it was just easier to rank. Love that. Okay. So you talked about how you, you know, you had colleagues that you can ask questions around to. So like, I mean, what are other ways that you, that helped you learn SEO? Like, and what were some of these, like your resources at the time? <clears throat> well, back then I was actually um, not that smart about it. Um, I read mostly like blogs, uh, you know, like large industry blogs and stuff and kind of followed more mainstream SEO and uh, didn't really find myself, uh, you know, actually becoming better. I mean, I learned and I'm, I was excited, like my, um, you know, I was uh, entertained by it, but I wouldn't say that I was really um, able to advance to the point where I was able to mm -hmm. rank for anything serious. Um, so that all changed when I began following sort of individual people that I admired uh, versus following industry blogs. And at this time, uh, who were some of these people that you're following? Um, well, this was so this probably all started for me, like where I would say, like I became a better SEO mm -hmm. starting in like late 2017. So uh, Matt Diggity um, was pretty huge um, in really opening my eyes to a lot of uh, uh, strategies that were, you know, not talked about on the mainstream SEO mm -hmm. blogs. Um, then in 2018, when Kyle Roof uh, ranked Rhinoplasty Plano in Latin, um, that was a real eye opener and something that greatly inspired my work at FreshBooks. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was big. Um, there's another guy named Eric Lantris, oh, yeah. um, who's really great. Uh, he has a, a site called My Traffic Research, where it's a community where he publishes videos. Uh, it's a paid community, but um, I've been a member for a long time now and always draw inspiration from there. And then, um, you know, just in general, um, building my network of people that I know um, who've been super helpful to me, um, guys like uh, Kapil Achani, um, and there's another guy, um, I haven't talked to him in a couple months, but um, there's a guy named Jack Vivian out of the UK, and I think he's in mm -hmm. Thailand now. Uh, he produces some really interesting uh, videos on uh, Facebook and stuff, and um, you know, we've been sort of back and forth over the last few years uh, sharing knowledge as well. Love that. So you actually talk about mainstream SEO and this other type of SEO. I mean, so what, how would you like differentiate the two? Like, I mean, the ones that things that people don't talk about. I mean, you wouldn't say they're black hatters or anything like that, right? Well, so what's this difference between mainstream SEO and this other SEO that you're kind of referring to? Well, I think, um, you know, there's the divide between on page and off page um, with regards to like stuff that mainstream publications can't talk about mm -hmm. uh, with regard to off page, you know, things like link acquisition is, is different um, uh, when you are able to, you know, acquire links. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, you can't really, you would, if you were following mainstream blogs and you just took their uh, word as gospel, uh, you would think that, you know, um, immediately you, you might get um, mm -hmm. penalized if you even thought of acquiring a link that was against Google's guidelines. Um, I think, you know, you have to be realistic in what in what you're doing, um, uh, you know, in order to compete for really difficult keywords. And, uh, you know, you just say yeah, you have to be realistic. Right. So mm -hmm. um, I'll just kind of <laughs> leave it at that right. without going into too much uh, further detail. But um, and then I think also, you know, when the mainstream publications um, have people write about them, they're also going to like heavily set, like um, edit those things for their audience and maybe not get into the nitty gritty kind of stuff. 
like the stuff that I cover, like there's no way that um, search engine land would let me write an article on one very hmm. specific thing that was 250 words long. That was just like one actionable thing and then that's it. Right. So hmm. with me, I can, um, an SEO notebook, um, I can publish anything that I want. Um, whereas if I was on a mainstream blog, they would be, you know, telling me to make this into a 2000 word article when it doesn't need to be. Oh, I love that. And I love to, that's a perfect segue to the SEO notebook. But before we say, um, before we get there, we have a couple comments here. I want to meet you, sir, Steve Toth, but I am from India. Steve, live in Canada. I am 19 years old guy. I read all articles about SEO notebook, but I wish I met, meet Steve. I message you in Twitter. You are my SEO inspiration. He is my SEO inspiration as well. Say, Klan, thank you for the t um, comment there. And Maj actually says, hey, Dre and Steve. Well, hi, Maj. How are you doing today? All right. All right. So, Steve, I want to um, get into, you know, the SEO notebook. I mean, so this is where the story begins of your uh, entrepreneur journey, right? So you were an SEO um, employee at FreshBooks.com, you know, a, a big uh, SaaS company on, in the finance industry. And and you, you, you left there. So I want, can you tell us a story between like, um, you know, the, your reason of leaving and what motivated you to leave? What were some of the, the tips that made you make the jump? Because a lot of people are scared. A lot of people are uh, watching this podcast or this, this show are also as an enterprise SEO, maybe want to go through that route. It's the same, you know, same thing here as me. So I'm curious, like, what are some things that, that led you to where you're at right now to the SEO notebook? Yeah, for sure. So um, it's not like it was a, pre-planned kind of thing. It kind of evolved over time. And then I made some decisions that ultimately benefited me and allowed me to go out on my own. Um, when I was at FreshBooks, uh, we were gunning for a keyword um, invoice template. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a 300,000 search keyword. It's usually like between a six and eight dollar CPC at the time, at least. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's a pretty profitable keyword. And, um, and then it also has a multitude of long tail keywords. Uh, like a huge multitude. And um, when we ranked number one for invoice template, finally, when we finally hit number one, um, I posted it on LinkedIn and I said like, you know, congrats to my team. Like I'm really proud of everyone. We finally achieved this like huge milestone. We've been working really hard at this for nine months um, and, uh, you know, just kind of didn't really think much of it at all. And um, I got two big leads out of it and ended up oh. signing those clients. So, um, you know, combined those retainers for those two clients were $10,000 mm -hmm. uh, per month. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty awesome. Um, and uh, it really opened my eyes in terms of like the power of LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And uh, right around that time, I had also um, had the idea for SEO Notebook and uh, and I think in what was it, June or July of 2019, uh, I finally decided to launch once I had a thousand pre launch subscribers. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of happened at the same time. Uh, we ranked number one. I started getting leads on LinkedIn uh, for, for freelance SEO services. And, um, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and then um, SEO Notebook just taking off in that summer of 2019. Love that. Okay, so I want to go. Um, when you when you took when you started this SEO notebook, you said a thousand pre-launch subscribers, or what was that uh, about? Hundred, sorry, hundred pre-launch subscribers. Yeah, yeah, I got just a hundred. So, so a hundred. So you had a hundred, and what was that? Did you like build a landing page and said, "Hey," or you promote on LinkedIn? You know, like how what was the kind of the story behind that? Yeah, yeah. So I was actually, um, it was mostly Facebook. Um, prior to like I mentioned, twenty seventeen is when I sort of started. Um. Uh, you know, Stephen Kang would be another guy that, that I followed uh, that helped me a lot early on. Uh, but I've started uh, basically posting an SEO signals lab mm -hmm. and then answering um, people's questions and just generally being helpful without any mm -hmm. expectation of what it was going to do for me. But at the time when I launched SEO Notebook, you know, I'd already been doing that for two years. Um, I had built up a reputation in the group as a helpful member. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and when it you know t t came time for me to get people support for SEO notebook, I got a bunch. Um, and you know people and I think that's because of the the dedication that I put into that group, you know, pretty much unknowingly. I didn't really I just did it because I enjoyed it. Um, and then you know when time came to launch SEO notebook, um, I had those people support. 
Love that. Being helpful and just building your reputation within groups has helped you there. I love that. Love that. Okay. So with the SEO notebook, you actually talked about, um, you brought up a great point when how you can explain something within your, you know, your notes within 250 words instead of writing this 2000 word article. So, um, you know, you started right, building the SEO notebook and you and I were talking about like how how you, you built it to now like, oh, ten, I believe you had 4,000 when we first met and now you're well over 14,000. So like 10,000 within the past two years. I mean, how would you like, um, you know, if someone wants to start their own like newsletter, what would kind of your like tips be there? Yeah. Well, I think, um, what helped me with my newsletter is like, it was a very like sticky idea. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just one page from a strategy notebook each week. Um, you know, it, it is it was basically my angle mm -hmm. um in terms of not just another newsletter not just another roundup of top blogs from the week mm -hmm. um it was you know curated by me so once i had built up my reputation as you know someone who's knowledgeable in the industry passionate and all that mm -hmm. uh, people began to trust my curation abilities so um i would say probably about 20 percent of the notes are my own strategies mm -hmm. and then 80 percent um are you know things that i pick up from other people mm -hmm. um so you know just and then also like you know the, the other thing that helped me is like since i was you know picking up tips from other people i would you know reach out to them and tell them i wanted to do it on seo notebook and then they would help me promote it as well so it's also helped the list grow in that respect love that so how else are you promoting the list are you are you actually buying it sending it any ads to your landing page or are you just push it online or is it just word of mouth that it yeah uh, i've never done any paid ads for seo notebook at all uh, it's all been organic growth and um you know i would say like my testimonials on my um home page help uh convert uh -huh. visitors because i know some people are fans of kyle roof they're fans of um you know christina azarenko whoever mm -hmm. um and uh and um I, I just, it's just kind of, it, there's just a snowball effect at this point. Um, I don't do any like active promotion other than telling people what the next week's note is going to be about mm -hmm. and just being consistent. Consistency, you guys, consistency, keyword there. All right. So just recently you actually um, spoke at a, at a, at a, um, it's not even a conference. It's more of a mastermind, right? It was kind of, it's called like a mass, mastermind, mastermind mansion. Okay, so yeah. what is that all about? When you when I was actually booking you for the event, um, for this time slot here, I was like, what is this all about? What is this mastermind? And was it like, is it just for SEOs? Is it or is it some all types of business? <clears throat> it's uh, it's mainly for SEOs. It's put on by a guy named Keith Evans and a woman named Stephanie Solheim. Okay. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. Um, but uh, the two of them um, have organized this for, um, I think this is their third event, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And uh, the premise is also something kind of sticky is that they um, rent out a mansion somewhere um, in the world. And oh, this wow. last one was just outside of Nashville. Mm -hmm. And um, you can stay at the mansion or you can stay at a hotel. Um, the seating is pretty limited to probably like 30 or so people. Um, there's two days of talks, um, lots of networking. Um, you know, we go, we went out for dinner each night. Um, a lot of us stayed, uh, before and after, uh, the, the mastermind as well. And basically just a place where you can openly share knowledge. Um, you're not too worried about, you know, people, um, you know, it's a, it's a trusted sort of a little community mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, highly recommend it. I had a great time. I'll probably go back to the next one as well. All right, I love that. Okay, over there, you actually you had a presentation, and it was on how to turn a keyword into 121 pages and get 4, 400,000 traffic value. Um, I mean, that's a lot to unpack there, but I mean, you have a whole presentation on there, and I, I, guys, if I can get permission to link it, I will link it in the description. But with this in this presentation, can you give us like the rundown of what was going on, what was actually presented here, and like the, the strategy? Yeah, that? sure. So it was actually um, it was actually two case studies. Uh, the one that um, inspired the title was um, the FreshBooks case study. So okay. um, taking that one keyword, which was invoice template, and uh, creating 120 pages um, for various long tail keywords around it. So, mm -hmm. um, those keywords could be something like, uh, PDF, uh, sorry, PDF word, Excel invoice template or invoice template for contractors, for graphic designers, for freelance writers, mm -hmm. or even things like, 
blank invoice template, example invoice template, generic invoice template, which are all search terms that, that people do when searching for invoice templates. Um, so we um, basically ended up creating 121 pages off of that sort of root keyword of invoice template. Mm -hmm. And uh, at its peak, it was earning uh, $50,000 um, traffic value per week. Um, and that was uh, clicks in Search Console times the CPC. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, what was the main strategy behind you? you created pages. I mean, what were how were the each each page? I mean, that's 121 pages. Did you design each one um, by hand? Um, you know, what's kind of like the, the the process there? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> so, at the time, um, like I mentioned, Kyle uh, Roof was ranking um, rhinoplasty plano. With, and if you don't know about that case study, you should Google it because it's awesome where he'd ranked a, uh, a page in Latin and basically, you know, won an SEO contest um, mm -hmm. by doing, by ranking that page in Latin. And uh, this was late 2018 when he did that. And uh, I hadn't, I didn't know Kyle at the time. I later um, went on to know him quite well and actually ended up working with him about two years l later after that. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time um, I was just inspired by what he was doing. And I modeled our invoice templates page after that um, uh -huh. page that he um, created that was in Latin. And then I also used the tool uh, Cora, mm -hmm. which I think the URL is seotoollab.com. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I was able to talk with Ted Kubitis, um, who is, is gracious enough to get on the phone with anybody who's a customer of his software and kind of give them the, the lowdown of how to use it. And um, we used Cora on our main page and heavily inspired by that rhinoplasty page uh, that Kyle created. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for the other pages, we weren't as um, exact in terms of our, our tuning and our optimization, um, but we're a little like, you know, depending on how low the search volume was or how important the page was, mm -hmm. uh, we just sort of, um, you know, used our, our got it to like 90%, didn't, mm -hmm. didn't focus on like making them perfect. Love that, guys. If you guys don't know about those two, like that case study, be sure to search that Rhinoplasty Plato case study and check out um, Cora. Cora's a great tool as well. So that's awesome. So that, I didn't know you actually used that for, to create all those those pages there. And I, and with all that ranking, so how about this, the, the, the second case study within your presentation? Um, so the second case study was an ed tech company uh, mm -hmm. that offered online courses um, like in, in person and then live online. So um, simultaneously, not asynchronously online. Uh -huh. And these are like really, really expensive, like coding boot camps that are like $15,000, $20,000. Uh, so the uh, the value of, of getting uh, these types of uh, um, students is extremely high. Uh, so what we did was, um, I can't name the the site just out of respect to that, that client, but mm -hmm. um, what we did was, uh, let's say they had a course on web development, mm -hmm. a boot camp. Um, we would ask questions, we would cr create a section on the site that asked questions like, uh, what does a web developer do? What companies hire web developers? Is web development hard to learn? We basically created like a bunch of like people also ask questions on mm -hmm. the journey of becoming a web developer. And uh, we created a really great section of the site. Um, one of the keys to that success was actually a left sidebar um, on the page that had links to all the different articles. Mm -hmm. So when people landed on that page, um, they basically uh, had this like nice, really nice menu on the left hand side of all this relevant content to them. And they ended up clicking and just staying on the site forever because it was so like apparent in their in their minds. Um, so uh, that was a really great case study. And then, you know, it wasn't just web development. Um, there were 16 other disciplines like product management, Python development, UX design. Mm -hmm. And uh, we basically repeated those same types of questions um, across every discipline. And uh, for that one, we also earned a $400,000 traffic value with about 300 pages. Wow, that's an interesting strategy there. I love that. I mean, were you playing with any schema or anything like that, or is it just just on page? Uh, for that, there was no schema uh, at the time. Uh, it was this was about about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. two years ago. So I don't recall doing any schema for that project. 
Got it. Okay, guys. I want to. If you guys have any questions, um, put them in the live chat. And we. Go, I want to get into our, our third topic over here. I'm, I'm talking about some notes. The top notes that you've brought on uh, that actually were um, posted on SEOnotebook.com. I mean, there's a bunch of notes that I've actually just bookmarked. There's a lot of templates I've sh saved. I mean, what are? I mean, but my what I save may not be as popular as what other people have been saving. So what's the most like? Um, what are some most uh, top popular notes that you you've been seeing on SEOnotebook.com? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I, like, do we do screen share or yeah, can, can we screen do share. screen share? Yeah, you can screen share. You can, I'll put it all on you. All right, I can. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to, uh, I can't, I can't do screen share right now because this browser is going to make me quit. So I, I can't do um, screen share, unfortunately, right now. Um, I don't use Chrome and this, uh, this, this live feed made me use Chrome. So it's not oh. enabled for screen sharing on my Mac yet. Uh, okay. but anyway, um, I can describe it. So, mm -hmm. uh, there was a really interesting note, um, recently, uh, from a site called niche twins.com that inspired the note. And, uh, it was basically called brand swapping. And mm -hmm. what they did was, um, they wrote articles. Um, their case study was around a dirt bike site and, uh, they wrote, articles like Yamaha dirt bike won't start Suzuki dirt bike won't start Honda dirt bike won't start and basically they took this one article about why a certain brand of dirt bike won't start and only replaced the brand in within the same duplicate content mm -hmm. of the page they said they changed about 15 percent of the text no more mm -hmm. so they maybe you know did a little bit of customization for Yamaha versus Suzuki, mm -hmm. but generally they were the same exact article um, with only the brands uh, swapped out. So they uh, they published their results. Um, you know the pages were getting upwards of ten thousand visits a month wow. in 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 many cases, and in total uh, for the I think fifteen or so brands that they wrote these pages for. Uh, they got about 71,000 clicks in the month of July, 2022. Um, wow. So uh, they also did this for articles like how to change a X tire, how to change mm -hmm. a Yamaha Suzuki Honda tire mm -hmm. or Yamaha dirt bike sounds loud, Suzuki dirt bike sounds loud, et cetera. So they, they basically proved that um, taking the same uh, you know exact piece of content and just swapping out the brands to change the the intent and the relevance of those topics, um, they were able to get you know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, topical authority for one one thing, but they were able to do it extremely efficiently because they didn't have to write net new articles for each one. Wow! So that that totally debunks the duplicate content. So just fifteen percent and just swapping out the brands, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like um, I had a client who actually took issue with some of the content that we created for them, uh -huh. um, and she said that um, the, you know there was uh, similar content between the. Or she she mentioned that um, the 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 articles looked templated from one yeah. to another, and they kind of had the same sections. Mm -hmm. So I just basically fired off that case study and. She was like actually really thankful that that um, you know that the data sort of spoke for itself, and uh, you know that was um, the end of that contention with the client. Love that. That's what I've always wondered too. Like I'm wondering, like you know, if, if if you do something for a client and they try to like say, hey, this is, they, you know, they read the mainstream SEO stuff and say, hey, this is duplicate content. This, you know, you can't do that. Oh, you know, their, your meta title should be certain uh, certain type um characters stuff like that so like i mean that's a great way to have having use case studies i mean were there any way other stories where if you had like clients kind of tell you like mm, that's not how you do it and you're like uh okay um yeah definitely um i don't know if i can bring one to the top of my mind uh at the moment mm -hmm. but usually um well everything that i do is purposeful for one yeah. So I am very, um, you know, I have convictions in terms of all the strategies that we do. So if there's any, and if there's ever any kind of contention, I'm never at a loss to back it up. Love that. All right. So what's another note that you can share with us? Um, the next one is a strategy that I came up with um, that I called uh, topical relevance hack. And, um, and 
what it basically does is like, let's say you're trying to rank for car insurance, right? Um, you might uh, Google car insurance and then see results from State Farm, Allstate, Geico, mm -hmm. etc. And uh, my strategy from there went to say, um, pick the top three results that you get, the top three domains for car insurance. Now go to Geico and and type site colon geico.com mm -hmm. and then car insurance again. And then you're going to get all the car insurance related yeah. articles for Geico that are helping them reach page oh. one for that generic term. Mm -hmm. And then do the same thing for Allstate, do the state thing for same for State Farm, right? So um, I've actually automated this with Python. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you can just put in like your seed keywords and then it starts to grab all the all the different ranking pages like really, really fast. Um, and then from there, you just want to make sure that you um, on your website are talking about the same types of topics um, that you that yield um, from those sites, site, site searches. So site right. colon Geico car insurance, site colon State Farm car right. insurance. Love that. And is that script available on your website or is this a personal? Uh, the script is not. Um, I don't publish that kind of stuff, but mm. um, you can just hire an, a developer on Upwork, uh, watch my video on YouTube and uh, and show that show it to them and tell them what you want. Love that. All right. All right. If there's one, I mean, we have time for one more. If you can, if there's one more top tip that from the SEO notebook this past couple of years. Sure. Um, the the other one that I love uh, from this year, well, there's lots, but okay. the one that I got a lot of feedback from this year was a hack for featured snippets called the main difference. And this was uh, um, taught to me by mm -hmm. a friend of mine named Kapil Ochani, mm -hmm. uh, who's also an SEO consultant uh, himself. And uh, what he discovered was for any keywords where there's verses, so if it's like A versus B, or the examples would be like, manager versus leader, mm -hmm. preferred stock versus common stock, LLC versus corporation. Mm -hmm. On your content to answer that question, LLC versus corporation, you use the word the main difference between LLCs and corporations is, mm -hmm. um, or are, I guess. Um, you And then that pretty much like triggers the featured snippet. So oh. um, there's been over 10 documented cases on my note um, uh, of this this hack working and I've used it for myself and I have friends uh, who have also used it. So yeah, the main difference is a really nice um, little strategy if you're doing any comparison pages. Love that, love that. Okay, you guys, I'm coming down to my last question here. If you guys have any questions, put it in the live chat and I will ask Steve here, but we did have one here. So what Asim asks, um, okay, maybe he wants us to help him out here. He goes, how to build a topic cluster around a niche washing machine? Um, so what I just mentioned with the topical relevance hack, yeah. you would Google washing machine. And then for the, the top results, um, let's say the first result was Maytag.com. Um, you would go and type in site colon Maytag.com washing machine. And then you would get to see all of the different articles that Maytag has around washing machines. Um, so there is that strategy. Um, you can also use the Google Autocomplete for uh, Auto Suggest uh, for for washing machines. So type in washing machine and then start putting spaces, start putting asterisks, start putting different letters of the alphabet um, after your keyword and see what type of topics uh, uh, surface after that. Um, you know, Google is really your best friend with, mm -hmm. with uh, producing, um, you know, that, that topical map um, for, for your keyword. And uh, it's just a matter of spending time on the SERP and um, noting everything down. Love that. We have Quim just joined. He was late and says, hi, Steve, you rock. All right. Thanks, All right, guys, if you have any more questions, put in live chat. I am, I'm going to go ahead and ask my last question right now. Uh, so for, I asked this question at the very end of the interview on, on someone wants to get into the SEO game, become an SEO professional, become an SEO consultant, become, you know, an, an SEO employee. What would your advice for them be? 
Um, well, one of the advice pieces of advice that I got, which was, um, you know, really helpful was to keep your job as long as you can. Um, don't leave your job until it's costing you money to stay in your job. And by that, I mean, uh, when I left FreshBooks, it was literally because I had so much potential business. I had, bu I had business, like mm -hmm. I had contact contracts ready to be signed. Um, but if I was to stay in my job, I wouldn't have been able to have the time uh, to to do that work. Mm -hmm. So the only reason I finally left FreshBooks was because I needed the extra time to uh, to take on these new clients. And um, you know, I did uh, the um, you know I definitely did the burning the midnight oil thing for about nine or ten months uh, before I finally left FreshBooks and. Uh, by that time, I already had an incorporated company uh, while working at FreshBooks, and uh, I had some savings in the bank so that if shit hit the fan, uh, mm -hmm. I was okay. But luckily, I was totally fine, and uh, um, it's been a, an amazing ride since since then. Love that. Okay. All right, we got, I'll take one more question here from um, Asim. How to rank a high-authority site without links? on minimum how to way. outrank a high authority site without links uh ppc there you go oh love that oh that was a nice one all right guys all right so um steve we are at the very end of our show here i want to um if you have any like uh anything to make this episode feel complete for you i mean what um can how can people get a hold of you is there anything you want else you want to say to the audience here uh, no, just thanks for having me on a second time, Dre. It's been awesome to see your growth as well um, through this show. Um, I know that the people who watch this um, truly appreciate everything that you're doing. And obviously, you know, your heart and soul goes into this show. So I know how it feels to uh, to really dedicate yourself to a piece of uh, a medium like this. Uh, whereas for me, it's the newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, so I just congratulate you on all the great work that you've done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Alright guys, this is the moment y'all been waiting for, Steve. Steve was one of my very first, um, was one of the first 10 guests here on the SEO Video Show and he was actually the very first person who actually performed live. And so I asked him again to perform live here on the show just for you guys for a special treat to go ahead and sign us off. Steve, can you go ahead and sign us off? <laughs> sure, Dre. Um, I guess if you ask for it, I'm going to do it, but... Um, let me just adjust my camera a little bit. All right. Uh, all right. So I'm a huge, I'm a huge Radiohead fan. So I'll just play um, a song from Radiohead. Steve, can you uh, hold on for one quick second while I sign off? Hold on for one quick second here. All right, guys. Let's see here. All right, guys. That concludes another episode of the SEO Video Show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I will see you next week. Peace out. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. Hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Want to see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre Devera helping you step it up. No delay right now. Time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo! Yeah, yeah.